we're not going to be able to see this shadow but it's good practice and you'll need to put this on your floor plan and this of course is built in so there is no shadow there now the shelves though they are going to have shadow so the best way to work with these to get the angles exactly right is to use the actual light source but since it's not giving us anything here it's almost straight across from the light source we can either use the top and get a little bit that way or we could just estimate something since this is such a small space anyway now remember that the bottom of this shadow has to go to your right vanishing point because it has it's a shadow for this front edge of the shelf so now if I do this up here I'm going to get almost nothing so pretty much nothing at all but I think that we should put it in anyway because we know there's going to be shadow cast here so the underside and the underside and this is going to be in shadow now this is a different story altogether and but I think we should use the lower one to do this shadow otherwise it's going to be too large and we use our right vanishing point to fill that in depending on the shape of our light source our pendant light the shadow for that would be if it's round of course it's on the perimeter you could choose up one side to be darker than the other so we could ideally just put this in it's probably not going to be a shadow value but a middle value but just to explain to yourself that since we've chosen this side for shadow we might think of this as the shadow side for this but we'll look at each person's light fixture individually on the walls themselves we're going to have a penumbra so we're going to have a little bit of shadow this is uh, what we're doing now of course is preparing for hatching so all of these areas on this drawing where we're putting the shadows is exactly what you're going to use to put your hatching in with your very very thin pen and over on this wall we have the same thing we have shadow so this is going to be in shadow even though we were unable to see it made from the light source itself so don't lose sight of the corner of your room it's right there so when you're doing your penumbra you'll be a little more careful where you put it this shadow it's the same height as the bed so we can use half a foot for that as well it seems rather large out here so maybe we'll trim it a little bit so there's some flexibility in your shadows the direction they go in is a little bit more important than the size of them but our concept is to have a brighter space we don't want to have it so heavy with shadow that it looks gloomy so where this hits the wall you go straight up and find this that we obtained through using the very center of the lowest part of the light we were able to put that in I would be inclined to fill the whole back of that in it's not anywhere near the light there's this little part here and then with the underside and then there's the underside the front of the shelf would be getting light and I can't really show that it's a little too small here but this would be shadow and I think the whole back would be shadow but it's good to go through the practice of discovering the exact shape according to the given light source now this item it's the front of it our wardrobe is getting light all across the front of it but this side isn't getting light but it doesn't cast a shadow if we go back to our floor plan we'll see that it's not going to cast a shadow here it's directly across from the light and the headboard since 
this part of our diagram is in shadow, this would be in shadow as well. So let's start now to put the actual shadows on the objects themselves. Once you get this all mapped out, all your cast shadows. So your hatching goes in all the places where you have these cast shadows, shadows cast by the object that's interrupting the light. Once you have those all mapped out, then it's easy to go around and figure out where the form shadows. And for those, we can easily see that they're attached to the cast shadows. So the side that's casting a shadow is the side that is the form shadow, the shadow on the form. So we can easily do this now. This will, what's great about this is that this dark is right in the foreground. These shadows are great. So the contrast between the side and the top is really going to be effective. Depending on how much you want to play this up. So again here, this is adjacent to the shadow that's casting it. So that's our form shadow. And look to see if we have any more form shadows. And this shadow will move from dark to light this way. This will move from dark to light this way. So that by the time this shadow hits the floor, there's some reflected light that will light this part up a bit so that our darkest part is going to be at the top and gets a little bit lighter as it goes down and then the cast shadow is going to get darker go from dark underneath and get lighter as it goes this way and that'll be the way to get this to really pop out and it goes along very well with our shadow mapping and our geometric shapes that have served us so well so far. So we're looking at the box when we're looking at the bed and this is our, our C side. So we can put this in as, as C and this is C and the top is A. The whole top of the bed is A. This is a B side because it's a, it's a facing plane. It's in the light but it's oblique to the light. And I'd like you to go through your drawing as well and put these notations in as also. And some of the shells are going to have a little bit of light on them. The front plane, this you would think is a light plane, but it's not, it's a B plane. So, cause it's in the light, but it's oblique to the light because the light is on top. This part is an A, and this is a B. And this is an A, this is a B. And this is a B. That was better with the red. Mixed up my colors. And this is a B. That's A, that's C, and this is C. C is all around here so but we don't want to make them too heavy and too dark this is a b value too this whole window wall this now i think we should make this a c even though it's not shadow it's not facing the light and it's not oblique to the light it isn't in the light at all so it's somewhat of a a decision you make just the way we decided to go in leave the shelves themselves an A but go back and make this a, a C back in here because it makes it it's a form shadow it will provide a little bit of contrast now you would think that this too should be a C because it's not getting light at all. It's blocking the light and casting a little shadow. But I think it would make it too dark. So I would opt for a B here. And 
because we, we would go B, C, A, so that would make it a little more interesting. And this is a B, so the two would go together. The reason I would do that is because this is actually very close to the light. So it's not a bad choice to make this a B. This, I think, would be a B. And that's a B. And remember what B looks like. B is your 3 and your 5, so it's a middle value. Not, not our darkest values, but a middle value. So B is like this around here. And uh, here, going from dark to light. And our carpet and our floor is going to be an A. So that's all light values. And this is an A. And the wall is going to be a B because it's in the light, but it's a little bit oblique to the light. That whole facing plane is B. The figure will have form shadow as well. So from here, this whole side of her is lit up but the underside of her isn't. So you could go in and try to mimic her shape. I think I would dress her up in something a little more tasteful. And this side of her arm would have shadow and the underside of her arm would have shadow. This is in shadow, it's not, She's her body is probably casting a little shadow. So that you could bring in your grays onto the figure as well. Otherwise, she'll look cut out and stuck down. So, and remember your graphic ideals that you want to think shape, not get too fussy with it.